What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Another day, another damn project over here, Auto Auction Rebuilds. So hopefully you saw yesterday's live stream video and ding, 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 ding. yesterday's live stream video, we talked about selling the 1980 Corvette that I had purchased and losing approximately $1,300 on it, which sucks. But right now, what we just did is we, we took the 4,000 that we got from that car and I just went and pulled another 2,500 out of the bank. So now we've got $6,500. We're gonna take that $6,500 and we are going to Wichita, Kansas. We were gonna pick up this vet. Now, the goal is to get AAA to tow it home. Even though the car is perfectly drivable, he says it does need some brake caliper work, which that's, if you're buying a C3, just prepare for that, even if it's only got 40,000 miles on it. Um, this car has sat for a long period of time so uh, it does run, it does drive. He said he just took it for a drive around the block and it, it, it is drivable, but he wouldn't recommend driving at home without doing the brake work to it, obviously. So we're gonna head out to Wichita. We're gonna try to get AAA to tow it because it's less than 200 miles away. It's about 150 miles. AAA will tow it because I'm a Platinum or Selector Premier, whatever the hell they call it. They'll tow me 200 miles for free. So we're gonna try to get them to tow it. If we can't get them to tow it, then we're gonna have to try to find like a U-Haul something get a trailer that's why we're bringing the truck um so that we can tow it back if that's what it comes down to and if all else fails if we can't get a trailer and we can't get AAA to tow it we may literally have to fix the brakes right where it sets and drive it home so this will be an interesting trip we're totally unprepared it's just me and my fiance and we have no tools and she's giving me a look like she could kill me so <laughs> she oh she's not happy <laughs> All right, so we had to stop for a minute in Tonkawa, Oklahoma, because the little lady had to pee. Don't you wish some women would pee before they left the house? I went before I left the house, but no. Alas, here we are stuck in Tonkawa, Oklahoma, so that she can go to the bathroom and have a piss break. So on a plus, on a positive note, we've driven about 100 miles, and the truck is, uh, truck is doing great. We have literally used one eighth of a tank of gas and uh, we're almost out of Oklahoma. We'll be in Kansas shortly. Looks like we got about an hour left until we get to, you see that smile? I can't help when I think about that beautiful car. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. We got about an hour and I'm uh, I'm really hoping we can just get AAA to tow it home. That's really what needs to happen i don't want to grab a trailer and pay for a one-way trailer and i think it's enough of a test of this truck just taking it we've never taken this truck this is the 01 red f-154 by four uh that we redid the front end on we've never taken this on any kind of a road trip so i think it's enough that we're taking it on a road trip without loading it down with a with a corvette and a trailer on the back of it we'll do what we got to do so let's get out there and uh Let's see what this bad boy's all about. Oh, wait. Copyright strike, right? Damn. All right, better turn that off. All right, so we are, uh, we're well into Kansas now. We're 140 miles into the trip, and we got about another 20 minutes, and we will be there. And aside from the steering wheel sitting crooked, this thing's been a, this thing's been a dream. So comfortable. And look at that, the gas three quarters of a tank how about that let's uh let's go get this car how about that ladies and gentlemen how about that take a look at this beauty i mean this is a legitimate 42 or 43,000 mile car there are numbers underneath here that I could not see on the other one. On my other C3, there are numbers written on the floor pans. This door is sagging a little. You can see that there. That's normal age time. Um, look at the meat on these tires. I mean, wow. Now I drove it here, but the reality is the brakes are horrible. Brakes are horrible. We've definitely got leaking calipers, which is uh, not a big deal. We'll replace all four of the calipers, probably replace all four rotors, probably replace ugh, replace the uh, brake pads too. We'll see. We'll see. But I mean, the tires, he said 
that in the last 15 years, he's only driven this car 2,000 miles. Um, and I will tell you this, it's got bad gas in it. It's definitely got bad gas in it. Uh, it runs, it drives fine, but it's definitely not idling quite right. Look at that. So right now we are in Wichita, Kansas, and the wind may be blowing a little bit. Um, it's got the glass T-tops, the real ones, the, the mirrored, but you can also, can you see my hand through there? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think you can, but this is the, the mirrored T-tops. Look at these door seals. Look at this. Look at the weather stripping. Look at this. All right, my phone's ringing. I got to answer that. All right, so take a look at the floor mats, man. Look at these. They even say Corvette on them. I mean, this car is, is like, as a, look at the seats. I mean, wow. A little faded in the carpet area where the sun shines through the back window here. And we do have some, some, some rotted out six by nines, but it's got them back there. This works. Look at this. I mean, look, Alpine. You guys remember Alpine? Now the fuel gauge does not look like it's working and being that it's sat for so long, that doesn't really surprise me. And I think this clock should probably work 24 seven and you can adjust it by hand, but the second hand is not moving. The heater works, the air conditioning works, even the cruise control works. This mirrored T-top thing, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This T-top is cracked. He gave me an extra set. He also gave me the original carburetor that came off this engine when he replaced it with an Edelbrock. I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a beautiful car. It's a beautiful car. Yes, it does leak a little bit of oil, probably a little transmission fluid. I don't know exactly. It's not leaking badly. Um, but it does have a few little leaks. The, uh, the headlights pop up. Like I said, cruise works, tilt works. 47,751 miles. And look at this original dash. In mine, there was a dash cover over it, and it was cracked and torn up underneath. Let's pop the hood and show you this massive... <laughs> small block v8 gotta watch that hood it may try to fall down on us here look at this engine we'll get corvette bin on here good pressure on the cooling system it's got a new master cylinder so that's good you can see we've got some leaky valve cover gaskets it's normal nothing unusual look at this all the vacuum lines are still here. They're hooked up. Everything is connected. They're not even rotting. Look at that. They're not split. They're not rotted out. How about that? How about that? He said that when he got it uh, 13 to 15 years ago, he put a radiator in it. Look, it's got a fan with a clutch. If you can't tell that I'm super excited right now, look at these, look at these. For the headlights, look at that. Look how beautiful everything is on this car. Just pristine. Oh, the air compressor. All of the air conditioning components are still here. It's, it's a magnificent car. And I'll be honest with you, I had so many plans to uh, pull this motor, possibly replace it with something bigger, possibly replace the motor and keep it. I wouldn't want to get rid of a numbers matching motor to this car or uh, put a stroker in it. I don't know, man. There's just something about this, this originality, this classic original. It's hard to do. I'm finding it very difficult to convince myself to touch anything on here other than a tune-up and, you know, maybe some headers and some exhaust. Comment below. What do you, what do you think? What do you think? I, I, I really almost hate to open this thing up other than to perform basic maintenance work to it. Valve cover gaskets, probably an intake gasket. Look, even the noise suppressor for the radio is still here. Wow. Transmission fluid. 
is clean and pink. I mean, talk about an unmolested, just original C3 vet. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I, I want to show you one more thing, I think, before we get out of here. I've got AAA on the way, but the floor pans, let's climb under here and take a better look. Look at this. Can you see that writing on the floor pans? Look at this. You can see maybe on that wheel, it's really wet over there. That wheel is really bad, but look at the suspension. Look at the frame. Uh, okay, you can't see that far back, but the exhaust still has the original heat shields on it. Wow. Wow. And it's not pouring oil or anything. It's got a couple drips you can see up there, but nothing serious. Meaty tires. I think, I think even Corvette Ben would be proud of me on this one. See if we can go on the truck, and I will... Uh, show you the uh the t-tops that came with it are right here they're kind of ratty but at least it's got t-tops that are usable that work um still got the weather stripping we got the front valance um and we got the old i gotta show you this for those of you that remember the rochester who remembers the rochester quadra junk i'm sorry quadra jet quadra jet there is the original rochester Quadrajet, quadrajet that came with this car. Wow. Look at that. I'd almost be tempted to have that rebuilt and uh, put it back on the car and have the car tuned. <sighs> Man. I guess there's only one thing left to do, and that's to fire it up, let you guys hear it run. So, let's do it. Sorry about the wind. Ugh. Like I said, fuel gauge doesn't work. Everything else seems to be good to go. Look at this. Fasten seat belts. The battery light. Look at it. <laughs> I'm so damn excited. And there it is. Tack works. Speedo works. Cruise works. Lights work. Windshield wipers work. Voltage. Oil pressure. Temperature. Like I said, you see that. That is pegged out, so... The sending unit has probably gone bad. We even got the lights down here working. The power windows work. The power locks are jammed. And Corvette Ben, I'll, I'll talk to him about that. The other one were jammed too. There's got to be something going on in the linkage in here where it was jammed. But I mean, look at the, uh, look at these seals. We need some door pins. That shouldn't be too big of a deal. So nice. Even the dome light. Even the dome light. definitely misfiring but I would bet that the misfire is from the uh, the bad gas but it probably needs a tune-up too check the glove box what is this is that for a sun visor or something no I don't know what this is anybody know what this is this came out of the glove box what do you think that is we got a, this holds your cassettes. <laughs> got a cassette bin or is that an eight track bin? I think that's an eight track bin. This is an eight track bin. The glove box light even works. Oh man, I'm stoked. All right, all right, I could do this all day. We got to get out of here. Let's get this thing home. Let's get it on tow truck, get it home. I can uh, figure out what it's going to cost to get these brakes and everything done so we can uh, put some fresh gas in it, take it out on a proper test drive. All right, we just made it back to the city. We're almost home, and as you can see, we ran this sucker smooth out of gas. There is nothing left in it at all. It's under the red line. We made it 331 miles. We're going to fill up the tank and see what kind of miles per gallon this beast gets uh, on the highway. How about that? No ethanol, 217 a gallon.
there you go that comes out to 14.6 miles a gallon on the highway yeah that was like 99 percent highway we couldn't even break 15 miles a gallon oh, i love this old beast though i do such a smooth smooth excellent riding excellent running and driving truck for what we gave for it and we're home and there she is boys how about that we'll check her out in the morning let's get out of here and i just wouldn't be doing you guys right at all if we did not come out here and before i forget let me just run this down the paint real quick so you can see that i'm not concealing anything <laughs> i swear some of the haters out there man <laughs> they want to see everything you know what i mean no cracks all right all right but anyway i wouldn't be doing you guys right if we did not do a cold startup and i'll be honest with you i don't i don't even know how this is going to go oh man getting into this one is so much easier uh the seats I, I don't know what the difference is but these seats are so comfortable let's see if it'll start without pumping the gas that's a no all right so there's your cold start my battery died literally right after i fired it up i got it back on here as quickly as possible you can see it's still nice and cold though the temperature is not warm it only took me about a minute or two look at this alpine man and it works you try to take us ball? <laughs> I don't think it's ready to uh, idle down yet, but we'll stomp the gas real quick and see. Nah, she's not ready yet. When she's ready, we can stomp the gas and she'll, uh, she'll idle down. I'll tell you this, the exhaust smells a little, uh, exhaust smells kind of like it does have bad gas in it. Yeah, it, it does, that doesn't smell good at all. Not at all. smell this no <laughs> no that's not good <laughs> I'm surprised it's running to be honest with you so I'm gonna let this thing uh, warm up for a minute then I'm gonna take you guys on a test drive then we're gonna call this video a wrap after I go over a couple more little things with you all right I think it's warmed up enough to take it for a drive we got the idle kick down look at this and this is normal for an old car <laughs> yeah all right hey even the e-brake works and we'll take you guys for a, a very quick test drive because the brakes are just uh they're real bad but they do work but i don't want to get it out on the uh i don't want to get it out on like city streets or anything like that it's a Sunday. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. There's nobody really out and about here. We definitely got to get some, uh, we definitely got to get some clean gas in this thing. Gotta love the GM creaking and squeaking, right? See what I mean? We could stop. It's not It's not that we can't. It's just uh, kind of like the other one. The brakes are, uh, the brakes are weak. I'm gonna take care of that today. And today I'm gonna do what I should have done with the other one. And I'm gonna replace all of the calipers gonna replace all four calipers I'm gonna check the brake lines and see if they need replaced and if they're showing any signs of fatigue we're gonna replace all four brake lines too just just to be safe just to be safe so there you go 
We took a car, another one. We took a car that's been sitting in a garage for two years and was started. I think he said he started it one time in that two years. And we put her back on the road. We took this beautiful 45,000 mile, 47,000 mile garage queen. And here we are. This car deserves to be driven. And uh, I'm gonna show her the attention that she deserves. This is a great car, rides great, aside from a couple little squeaks, which I can hear right now, the main one is coming from my window over here. Uh, we'll get all this stuff sorted out, man, we will. Let's get home and uh, let's wrap up this video. All right, so before I get out of here, I want to address something that some of you, and maybe even rightfully so, may be feeling or thinking about me just getting rid of the other Corvette. So perhaps you wanted to see me completely rebuild and restore that Corvette, and you're disappointed that I got rid of it when I found out there was just too much work to do. Some of you may think I'm lazy for that, and honestly, when I first saw a couple comments that said something like that, it did piss me off. It did. I, I let it get to me, and I know better than that. I've been doing this long enough to know better and let you know, a couple people in the comment section get to me. But uh, it did get to me because the reason was not because I'm lazy. The reason for getting rid of that one was because it needed so much. I'm talking suspension front and back. The rest of the brakes needed done. It needed the body mounts replaced. It needed a lot of fiberglass work. It needed a, a, a hell of a paint job. The interior, although it looked good in video, it wasn't really that great. It was painted with some kind of white paint, so the interior needed redone. And that's before we even get to doing anything to the motor and the transmission. So what, what I realized is that I had made a huge mistake buying that car for $5,000 when I could have bought this one for $6,500. I, I should have bought this one. This one was ready to go. I mean, granted, we got to put some brakes on it, but this is a car, it's not as solid, I would say, of a runner as the other one was, because the other one was, it was a strong runner. This one's, you know, it may need a little bit of a tune-up. It's gonna need some fresh gas. We may have to put a fuel sending unit in it. It needs a few mechanical things. I'm okay with that. You, as you can see, it runs and drives right now. We'll put some brakes on and get that sorted out first. We'll put some fresh gas in it, and we'll go from there. For $1,500, the way I look at it, I kind of look at it from a business perspective. Yes, I did lose money on the other car, obviously, but even with losing the money on the other car, $1,300, and even with paying an extra $1,500 for this one, that's an extra $2,800 into this car now than I had into that one. Do you have any idea how much it would have cost for all of that body work that needed done? That car was cracked in so many places. It was fatigued all over. $2,800, in my opinion, was a fair trade-off to buy one that's got a body and interior that's pristine, that's got an original 47, sorry, 47,752 miles on the odometer that comes with the T-tops and an extra set of T-tops in the garage. There was just no competition for me. $2,800 and I can have one that's pretty much done. And now we can focus on what I really wanted to focus on. What are we gonna do with it? I want you to comment below and tell me what you think. What's your opinion? What should we do with this car? My original plan was to pull the engine out of this one and put a 400 crank in it and make it into a 383 stroker. Or potentially save this motor, don't open it up, put it to the side, and I think I said it before, I found some 383s on eBay brand new for five, $6,000 that are over 500 horsepower. We could do that, and that comes from carburetor to pan. That is complete drop and ready. You literally just drop it in your car, bolt it up, and on, on the road you go. Off the road you go. Down the road you go. <laughs> that was my original plan. Maybe put some headers and some louder mufflers. Maybe we'll do side pipes. Maybe we'll just do some flow masters, cat backs. Maybe we'll remove the cats. I don't know. That's what I love about this car. It's so original that we can do whatever we want to and really make it 
really make it personalized for me, for even for you guys, because I'm going to let you in on some of the things we can do with it too, and you're going to help make some of these decisions. Alternatively, because of how original it is, it's kind of eaten me alive to think about doing anything to it. It doesn't have to be a high horsepower car. I already have one. I, I've got a C6. It's beautiful. It's original. It's it, I, honestly, you're. I doubt. I'm not going to say you can't, but I doubt you're going to find one in much better condition than this, unless it's been completely frame off, restored from the ground up. Um, and I really hate the idea of even tearing into this one and doing any changes to it at all. So I'm confused. I'm going to need some time to think about it. So what I want you to do is comment below and just give me your opinion because it's really going to help me make a decision. Should we start putting exhaust, you know, headers and new pipes on it? No catalytic converters. Uh, should we drop in a uh, 500 plus horsepower, 454, not 454, 500 plus horsepower, 383. And we could even go, we could go cheaper for $2,900. I can have a 425 horsepower, 383 delivered to my door. Doesn't come with a carburetor, but that's no big deal. Um, there's a lot to think about. I've got a lot to think about. So while I'm thinking and replacing all of the calipers on this car, all four and all of the brake pads, I would like you guys to uh, comment below because as you're watching this video, I am literally wrenching on this car. Um, there'll be a video for you tomorrow of me doing the brakes, um, at least half of them. I'm not going to show all four because once you've seen me do two, I think you've seen enough and then we'll go for a test drive. So that should be tomorrow's video unless something goes majorly wrong. Um, and until then, comment below and tell me what you think we should do to this. Should we keep it original or should we modify it? We'll start with that. And maybe we can get this one wrapped. There's an idea. Justin uh, Justin is supposed to wrap one of our cars. Maybe this is the one. We'll see. And if we wrap it, I'm going to let you guys decide the color. A wrap isn't going to hurt the car. It's not going to hurt the originality at all. In fact, it'll protect the paint. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think this will be the car that we wrap. And eventually, I'll send you guys, like, a, a list of colors. And then you'll be able to comment in a future video and tell me what color you want this thing to be and you know majority rules i guess or we'll do a poll or something i don't know we'll figure it out i gotta get out of here it's uh, like 8 30 i gotta get things done man the heater in this thing works great thank you all very much for watching because without your views this car wouldn't be here today and this is kind of like a dream of mine i know a lot of you are probably like wow of all the cars you could pick you pick a c3 i can't afford a c2 so yeah, I really love the C3. So thank you to all of you for making this possible. Stay safe out there. I'll catch you tomorrow. Unless something goes terribly wrong with the brakes on this one today.